can judge by what you see in front of you. What we're doing today is control arm bushings on my 85 Mercedes 300D. I bought these like a year ago or even longer and I've just had them sitting in the box because I didn't want to tackle this job. I just did oil cooler lines and so I figured while I've got it jacked up, why not just go ahead and tackle these because I was looking at them and I was like, man, these things look gross. Um, I'll show you, they're, they're squeezing rubber off. They're, the passenger side one, I mean, other than the, the rubber looks old and cracked and stuff, doesn't look near as bad as the driver's side. The driver's side looks like the bushing is actually rotated in the control arm and it's just a mess. And so um, we're gonna go ahead and address that and try to get this thing um, a little better in the front end. And it really doesn't seem that bad, but um, we're gonna fix it and then I'll take and get the front end one. So uh, before we get started, kind of figure, we'll kind of go an overview on what you would need to do this job. Um, of course, you're gonna need new uh, control arm bushings. Now, um, you can actually put W126 control arm bushings in these cars, and I did not know that at the time when I bought these, like a year or over a year ago. I uh, found out about that later. So this is what I've got. Also, at the time, didn't know that Euro is not the best of parts, so hopefully these hold up. You know, they're definitely not gonna last as long as the, the stock ones did but or the oem ones but uh hopefully they'll they'll last for us so um the way these work um you've got a bolt that goes through the the body or the the chassis and of course um then this uh, this kind of goes through and holds these together once you get them in the control arms and what you got to do is you can see this side is uh it's kind of flared or whatever however you want to call it and to fit in that recess right there and this side is not and that's so you can get it in the control arm and get both pieces in get it together uh, but you have to flare this end and so what I've come up with is um, we will take that'll get that hold that in snug and then on this end We'll take that one. That one fits right inside of there. And of course we'll get it, make sure to get it started straight. And we'll put this on there. And we will of course run that down and that will start the taper on that. And if we need a little bit more taper than that, we'll then flip over to this. That'll put a little more taper on it. And then I think we'll finish it off by just making it flat to completely flatten it, kind of how that is. Or we'll flip our, uh, if our lock washer or flat washer go in there, see, just like that, we can finish it off with flat washer. So that's kind of the plan. Um, that's not my idea. Uh, that's how other people have done it. I mean, there's probably a million different ways you could do this but that seems to me like the best way. Um, some people have tried to hammer them, but I mean, it, when you hammer it, it's gonna try to push this side out. So really you need to just have something to hold this side while you're you know, compressing that side. And so I think they make a tool to do it, but uh, I, w I went through my bolt bin and found all this scrap, not scrap, but uh, to me, I was gonna do it with all thread until I was looking for wheel studs or wheel lug nuts and I found that bolt. To me, it kind of looks like a alternator bolt for a GM, but may or may not be it. But you could do it with all thread or just go to your uh, parts store. That one's actually bent. I just now noticed that, but I found another one just like it, so I'll go grab the other one. But um, go to uh, parts store and you know just see if you can dig through their lug nuts just find something that kind of fits in, kind of that same taper as that, or, you know, it kind of fits like that. Um, and you might, you know, if you could find one like that, then get a bigger one that fits better. Uh, start with one, then do the other one. Kind of do it like that. But I'm just going with what I've got. And uh, you'll need a, uh, so tools you'll need. You're gonna need a 24 millimeter socket 
and that's what fits the um, bolt that goes through the control arm bushing. And uh, of course the wrench for backup. Uh, if you don't have a 24 millimeter, you can do it with a 15 16 I didn't have a 24 millimeter uh, boxed in wrench to hold the other end of it. I had the socket but not the boxed in. And so 15 16 fits it really good. So you could use 15 16 on the, the uh, for a socket as well. Uh, probably do a six point just to be safe. And you're gonna need a spring compressor. And so uh, this is a set that I bought when I did the guide rod or brake support rod bushings. I used it, um, I think that's the only time I've used it. So um, you're gonna need one of these. Um, these are pretty specific. Uh, you don't wanna use one of the little generic ones. These are, uh, this is definitely the way to go. And so um, I'm not aware of a way to rent these things. I bought it, I figured, I will use it several times on this car, so this will be the second time. Well, if you count sides, uh, by the time I'm done with this, I'll use this thing four times. Um, so I think it's paid for itself. Um, so you'll need that. And, uh, you know, some various other miscellaneous tools. Um, but for right now, that's what we're going to go with. And... Uh, I guess if you wanted to get the control arm out from under the car, you know, you could undo the ball joint and guide rod and stuff like that. I'm going to try to uh, leave it under the car and do it like that. So let's go underneath and I'll show y'all. I know this video is getting long already, but I figured I needed to cover um, all this stuff beforehand. And then we will actually do time lapse for the work. Let me show you under the car. I get comments sometimes that I talk too much in my videos, but I'm just trying to cover everything and show y'all what all you need to do. So what I did is I got up under here and I sprayed the front and back side of the bolt uh, and the surrounding area with foaming engine, engine degreaser. Then I took a brush. This was actually a new brush when I started. You can see how grimy and gross it is now took that and scrubbed really well uh, of course both sides like I said and then I sprayed it down with brake clean after I got it all scrubbed with the foaming engine degreaser and then I uh, blew it off with compressed air and let it sit for a minute and then what I did is because these this is a washer on this side on the other side it's got one like this but it's actually made to the bolt and what this is this is the uh, used for your alignment um, and so you do not want well you're, you're gonna need to get an alignment after you do this anyway but just to get it close what you want to do is just go ahead and mark it in two spots and that's what I've done at least two spots and I've done it there and there of course and that's just with a paint pen if you don't have one get one uh, it's gonna hold up a lot better than trying to do it with a sharpie or something It'll stay on there a lot better. And then on the back side, you can see I did, well, you can't see anything. There we go. You can see I did the same thing. Uh, I think I did, yeah, two marks. The other side, a couple spots, I did three because it wasn't as good of a spot to mark. But um, right there and right there. And so that, like I said, this washer here is made on to this uh, bolt and so when you undo it put your wrench on this side put your ratchet or in my case uh, impact wrench on the nut side because the nut will turn this is going to turn your whole uh, uh, alignment washer uh, I'm sure there's a technical name for that but that's what I'm going to call it is the alignment washer that is uh, I guess welded to this bolt here so that's what you need to do mark it mark both sides and then of course if you're i would recommend doing uh driver and passenger side control arm bushings at the same time that way you can go get your front end alignment uh, so uh, we're gonna do that and so that just gets you kind of in the ballpark of where at least where it was it's probably not gonna be right and you see this one doesn't look too bad but it's it's pretty pretty nasty um 
you can see how cracked it is. The front side of it looks decent. Back side is junk. And of course, and there's where I marked that one. We're on the passenger side now. You can see how bad that bushing is. And see where I marked that one. I hit it that one with three spots because uh, just because. And uh, you can see this bushing. Where's the rubber on this side? And uh, this side is kind of pushed out and flopping. It's junk. So let's uh, do that. Uh, there are notches. I'll cover that in the bushings that need to line up kind of, I guess, parallel with the control arm. Uh, these are not parallel with the control arm right now. And then of course, uh, when you do this, just kind of snug this up and do your full torque with weight on the wheels. I will uh, put the wheels back on it and block it, um, put blocks under the wheels so I can still get up under here and uh, torque this nut. I'll find the torque figures for that and let y'all know. So I'm going to set up time lapse and we are going to uh, start by doing the tension off the spring. And once we do that, we will um, uh, do the um, take the bolt out and drive the nut or drive the bolt through and get this uh, control arm out of here or down at least.
All right, we're at the part where we're gonna start reassembling this. And um, what I did, um, if you saw, I, um, I just used a straight edge. To line that up, I kind of made it parallel with the ball joint. I think that's right. Um, and it looks like this one moved just a little bit, but uh, that one stayed. I think it's close enough. Um, anyway, um, so, what I did, I, you know, I compressed these in here and then um, I sprayed them with some soap, soapy water, uh, mild soap water, and um, to make them a little slippery going in. They went in, just kind of make sure as you're driving them in, you know, they're going straight. Um, I was able to kind of, you know, twist my uh, all thread that I had. Uh, just used a piece of all thread to thread them in. I was able to, I made it real long so I could kind of grab the end of it to kind of manipulate it if I needed to, um, you know, get some leverage to, you know, kind of make them straighten, you know, however I needed to do it. So that's what I did there. And um, then once I got them in, this one was kind of stubborn. It wanted to pop out a little bit or not stay sucked in all the way. And the reason it does that is because, um, you know, there's a metal part to this ball joint and they touch in the center. And so the rubber is rubbery. You know, this one got pushed in all the way. This one got pushed in until the metal part touched and the rubber wanted to squish back out. And so what I did, um, if yours is like that, you're going to need to push it in before you um, crush, you know, this sleeve. And so I ended up... I was trying to think of the best way to do this and I took a crappy cast C clamp and just took a, a I don't know if it's a two inch pipe fitting and um or actually it's conduit and just I chopped off the end of the uh C clamp. This is a, a cheapy, you know, you can get these really cheap. And um uh, so I, I grabbed a sacrificial. I've got some better ones that aren't cast which would have welded better, but I really didn't want to sacrifice one of those because they're good C-clamps. So I just welded this thing like crazy and just put a ton of weld on it um, to kind of try to keep it from breaking. Um, and it it held. So I slipped this on there, as you can see, and tightened it down with my bolt already running through. This held on the bolt. Yeah, it just barely fit. I should have should have uh, staggered my pipe a little bit further in, but I wanted to get a little weld on the lip of it right there. But it just fit, and that allowed it. That pipe sat in here, and it, it compressed this thing with leaving me an opening to get my uh, little wheel nut in here and kind of compress this thing and so that's what we ended up with and that's a pretty good uh, the last step I did I uh, put the back side of the bolt on there and when it did it kind of because it was it's a hex sided it, it flared this out a little bit so I just tapped it put a socket in here and tapped it in with a hammer to kind of round it back out a little bit it, it kind of pushed out just a little bit in a couple spots but that's what we ended up with. And to me, that is a nice fit. And this was not too bad of a job at all. So what we can do now is just, um, I'll get my pry bar time lapse back on, get the pry bar, and we will move this thing back into place. And we're just about done with this side. We will uh, put our bolt back in, line our marks back up, and um, tighten that bolt back down, and release the spring, and that's it done now's a good time uh while you're doing this check your guide rod bushings and your guide rod itself i think mine are actually in good shape i actually bought two of them um and end up i just ended up replacing the the bushings i think the guide rods themselves are actually in good shape i tried to get some slop out of them here and i couldn't really get anything out of them so um I think we're in pretty good shape. I don't recall them rattling around, so I'll put the ones I bought on the shelf. So let's go back to time lapse and we will get this thing back in. Oh, 
probably, I know pe people might complain about the soapy water. I, I don't know if silicone spray would have been better off, um, but it was very little soap in it. Um, but d I, I wouldn't put them in dry. Uh, I think you need some kind of a lubricant to help keep from tearing them up and help them slip in easy. All right, I just uh, snugged up the uh, bolt and then once we get it on the ground or weight on the wheels, I'll go back and torque those down both sides. I'll do them at the same time. And so I'm ready to move over to the other side and I'm not gonna film that, but let's wrap this up and um, I'll give you the torque specs on those as well. Uh, if I find them, I'll put them in the end of the video. But let's go up underneath and see what we got. So there's a slot in the bolt, if you can see that. And that lines up with the slot on the washer. And so you really wouldn't have to mark both sides because it's indexed on the, well, I guess you could, I could flip it backwards I guess maybe um, anyway it's marked out that gives me a spot to look at on both sides so it's lined up whether that's right or not uh, we won't know until you know we check the alignment but that's at least where it was before so probably not right <laughs> um, so because looking at both sides, they are completely different specs or different setups. So, you know, this thing was aligned at some point and they, um, I guess it was aligned or somebody's had these off or whatever. They're not the same. And so that tells me that they've been changed at some point, probably. So anyway, that's what we look like. Um, bushings look really nice and you know we can mark that off the list on things that we need to do to this car so um, which is good that list is slimming down um, so let me get to the other side um, spring compressor is off everything like i said we're completely done over here so i'm gonna move on to the other side and i'll wrap this up uh, when i get done
So I let it down on two of those blocks. Uh, so I, I could have the suspension sitting on those control arm bushings uh, with the bolt just snug but not tight. And then once it was down, I went ahead and torqued those. It's 180 Newton meters, which is like 135 foot pounds is the torque spec on those. And I went ahead and I just did 135 uh, foot pounds and they are torqued down. See them in there, it's starting to get dark right there. Torque down. Uh, they are probably the their front end's probably all messed up as far as alignment goes. And I'm not gonna align it. I'm gonna I, I debated, you know, trying to figure ways to align it, but it needs caster, it needs camber, it needs toe in, it needs all that. Um, because all of it is out of whack at this point. It's all the work we've done on this suspension, and you'll see those videos coming out but um, another thing to note is the nut that comes with the or at least in my case that came with the bushings is the wrong thread type do not thread this on your nut I just reused the old nut this is a coarse thread nut and the one that is on there is a real fine thread not sure what this is what thread pitch it or and everything this is but it is not the same as the nut it came off so i reused my old nut like i said it's also a cheapy looking nut it does not have as many threads not as thick of a nut so probably would have reused the old one anyway those things are torqued down tight they are not going to come loose um and it is a lock nut but like i said i mean really not supposed to reuse nylocks but um i think that one's fine anyway um like i said front end's all out of alignment uh, I'm going to take it, get it aligned. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment down below, hit the like button, and subscribe for more.